Cherry Picks is one of my favorite websites because, or, or brands, because it's literally doing the Be Bechdel test, really, um, which is here are the movies that people who are not straight white men might want to see. So I love the idea. I love the name. They are cherry picked. Um, and Brainwashed is like a perfect cherry picked because it's just like if, if the film industry is chair is about cherry picking the right films, this is sort of like a fruit festival, your movie. <laughs> it basically says the world is made of fruit and you don't need to pick cherries because look, we are creating our very own honest stories about how hard it has been to be looked at instead of be the actors in our lives. And you, Nina, are just by seeing the water in the fish tank and showing us the water in the fish tank and creating brainwashed, you are going to change the world. So I'm so excited to talk to you today. Well, having your support as the, um, one of the, the pillars of the, uh, the movement to topple the patriarchy, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to be in company with you and in, in solidarity with you and everything that, that you have done. Thank you. Yeah, we are, we're, we're out here fighting, right? Well, yeah, I was yeah. just so moved when I saw first your talk and saw the material that you started with. And again, like a soul sibling out there on the path going, look at the water, look at the water. We're fish in a fish tank, but look at the water. We've been looking at the fish, but look at the fucking water. And um, for people who are just hearing about this movie, you know, I feel like it's one of the most important films anybody can watch in this country right now. Um, tell us a little bit about why you, why Nina, what, what made, I mean, I think a lot of people know that it's the talk that you gave, but I want to know as a writer, who the hell are you? What, what happened between 20 and 40 where you were under the thumb of this self hatred generating machine that we've all been participating in yeah i mean i i start you know i went to the ucla film school and i started making my own films really young and i just had a really strong feeling about that i wanted to express how i was feeling and and mm -hmm. the way that that came out like in my first feature was a feature about a prostitute who hates her work and you, you never see her body. It's just her head. Mm. Um, and she pissed off. It's called Magdalena Viraga from 1986. Wow. And that film, I remember, you know, when I showed it at UCLA to a huge theater of people, this young guy stood up and he said, you know, this is the most violent film I've ever seen. You do things that even Brian De Palma doesn't do. And, and that really blew my mind because it was like, you know, there's very little violence in the film. There is one murder, but it's like, I mean, compared to Brian De Palma, come on. So this guy felt that his whole worldview was being violated. And it was the most violent thing he ever experienced, you know, mm -hmm. because he didn't have the friendly fuckable girl on the screen taking off her clothes. So that, you exactly. know- that The violence of, of being forced not to see her vagina and her body while he's having to look at her face. It's like violence <laughs> on his worldview. It's violence on his worldview. So that is where I kind of like, I sort of had a slow awakening about the fact that the kind of images that I wanted to create and the kind of films I wanted to create about the subjectivity of my own experience. And specifically, you could say kind of, in a way I've used the term like the shadow side of the the shadow side of the usual female cinematic figure who's like, you know, lying around being gorgeous or even, even in the action heroes, you know, the action heroes who are, they're active, but they're still essentially sexy babes. You know, uh, this friend of mine said, you know, they're fighting fuck toys. So yeah, so there's, so that was where I was coming from. And at the same time, the whole canon of the canon you know, it's only so recently that these like BFI 110, 100 best films of the world, it was all men. There was Chantel Ackerman. I know, it's really awful. Guys. And awful. how dare these places like AFI with these boards continue to reify the male gaze in this way when the world is falling apart? 
That's what uh, I would like to know. And I think that the, you know, the, the fact is, is that a film like uh, Brainwashed is trying to bring, this film is, you know, those of you who might know my work, my work has tended towards a sort of avant-garde or experimental side of the mm-hmm. spectrum, but Brainwashed is really um, created for, you know, a mainstream audience and its main goal is just to bring to consciousness this like you were saying you know and someone in the film says you know that the male gaze is is so normal for most people that it would be you know thinking about it is like a fish asking if if it's wet like like it's just it's just it's just in our system. And, and that's the whole struggle is get this stuff out, out, out of our system, get the poison out of our system and brainwashed with 175 film clips of the most famous films from film history sheds a new light on film history and it asks us to become mm-hmm. aware of this stuff and reject it. And reject it. It is like kind of going, it's like, it's like watching it is like going through the car wash where you get your patriarchal gaze cleaned off this is the gold <laughs> version with the tires too it's everything yeah you get rid you just get rinsed of your of your male gaze if you're still holding it that is the greatest analogy i've ever heard yeah it's, it's Rainwash, so for the car wash for your mind and your yeah well and your- yeah the reason i'm asking you about your personal connection to yeah. this political work is I, I go through the exact same thing i'm fighting in every second that I have the right to be, yeah. let alone be a filmmaker, let yeah. alone commit those ideas to film, let alone demand distribution. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that, you know, to, to, to survive as a filmmaker in this environment, which is essentially hostile, <laughs> um, uh, you know, is, I don't know, it's an act of, 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 I mean, I don't want to self-compliment myself, but it is an act of courage and endurance and- And, 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 and believing and, in miracles, believing in miracles, in, Nina. Yeah, and, but it's also like, I mean, I'm glad you said that because I don't know if everyone understands like how much, <laughs> well, probably everyone does understand how much struggle it, 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 it takes to like, you know, wake up every day and say, you know, I'm going to maintain my own perception of myself and the world. You know? Yes. Yes, because when you are raised male in patriarchy, you believe that your perception of the world is slightly better. <laughs> yeah, slightly a lot. You're the alpha, you're the er, you're the first. And so even the act of us going, you know, I, this is what I'm wearing today. No, I'm not going to stand here and look great for your gaze. Well, I can't figure out if I'm going to be cute or beautiful or a threat to you, but guess what? I'm not going to think about it. Even to do that is to not just create our own gaze, but also to shed light on them. And that is very uncomfortable for them copy and you know let's 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 include you know it's not it doesn't you know I think that it I believe I I I hope I'm right here I think bell hooks was the one who said you know patriarchy has no gender you know there's there's a lot of of women who come down on the side of 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 oppression you know and there are a lot of cis white straight men who come down on the side of liberation right you know? so um it's 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 important to remember that you know there there are a lot of there are a lot of women who are threatened by the idea that you know maybe all of this stuff <laughs> has to go you know because i agreed but i i really think that part of what you're doing and part of what we're doing by naming this collectively is saying that this you know divided feminine the women who support the men and the women who don't is still somehow women's responsibility it's not it's the responsibility of the patriarchy and the men who were raised male in patriarchy because they were assigned male at birth it's the responsibility of white people to call ourselves out for doing this to black people at the exact same rate. And the, um, the way that the binary works, well, I'm a man, so you're a woman. Well, I'm a white, I'm white, so you're, ba- you're black. That binary is actually the enemy. 
So men who are using this will men this and women this. Well, men see women seen. Well, you know, men hunt, women gather. Like anybody who's using this binary at all is really the problem. I'm going to let my dog in. Keep talking or answer. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I really went through a personal transformation through the process of making this film. I have to say, like, um, when I started the film, I, 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 I announced myself as a heterosexual woman. And I, I always thought that that's what I was, you know. And by the time I finished the film, I just was sort of like, I don't even know what I am anymore. I don't even know that I can participate in this system. I, 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 I don't know. I, I mean, what I've always been is, is an extremely alienated heterosexual woman. Let's put it that mm. way. I never bought into it, but I, 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 I sort of am jealous in a way of gay women because I feel like, you know, they have, they have a way out that I don't have. Um, but what, what really happened to me in terms of my personal journey with this film is I do feel like that that poison that was inside me, even though I'm aware of this stuff, I've, I've been teaching this stuff, but it was still inside. It was like inside my blood veins. Yeah. And, and by making the film, it, I got exorcised, you know, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not simple. It goes so deep. And what you're yeah. saying about the binary is the bottom line. You know, I think I quoted this the other day, but you know, Rabbi Jesus has some great quote that I read in the, in the uh, Gnostic gospels, which are the heretical gospels, which were hidden and destroyed um, for years, or I don't know if they were destroyed, they were hidden. Some of them were destroyed. Some of them were found. And, and Rabbi Jesus, he talks about the fact that, you know, when male and female um, become one, when there's no more binary, that's when you enter the kingdom of heaven. Right. You know, like that's basically longest. setting it out for trans people, you know, yeah. he was probably non-binary or angels were probably non-binary people. Of course you know? they are. Cause that's why, that's why the gender would have to be so reified to kind of like define people as being mortal. Thank you.